Okay, everyone. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first of all, um, thank you for coming today. I know a lot of you are here, uh, really interested to see the new Metastock 14 and what uh, what is new in Metastock 14. Let me introduce myself. My name is Kelly Clement. I'm the director of sales here at Metastock. I've been uh, with the company for 13 years, and by far, uh, this is the most excited I've been about an upgrade and what we've done in an upgrade. And I think you're really going to like what you see. Uh, let's go ahead and get started here. So the first, uh, first of all, uh, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people in here who either have Metastock or don't have Metastock. Really what I'm going to be talking about in this webinar is an overview of what's new in Metastock 14. It's not an overview of everything in Metastock, it's just really what we've done new in Metastock 14 and we'll really be focusing on those. Obviously if you're new to Metastock, you'll probably learn some things about what we're doing in Metastock, but I'm really going to be showing you what's new. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and just show you here really quickly. These are the top things that we've added in to Metastock 14 that we'll be talking about in detail as we go through the webinar. First of all, we have a new improved power console, which makes it a lot easier to use and flow through Metastock. A new advanced search feature for being able to find symbols and, and stocks faster than you've been able to in previous versions of Metastock. Uh, we're now doing tick bars in Metastock RT, formerly known as Metastock Pro. Uh, this one I'm really excited about, and we'll spend a lot of time here, is how to draw and select patterns in the forecaster, and really how to do forecast analysis on patterns. Because patterns are a big part of the market and what we see in the market. So the ability to be able to copy a pattern from a chart or draw your own pattern is a very powerful feature. So we'll be spending some time on that. Uh, next, we're, be, we're talking about a new built-in uh, recognizers in the forecaster. We've put in some new uh, automatic ones for you. New ranking abilities in the forecaster. And then a new trading system that's built on support, resistance, Fibonacci's, etc. So we'll be talking about that as well. So let's go ahead and get started, first of all, with the Power Console. So there's a lot here. I'm not going to be reading this. But this shows you some of the things that we've been doing in here. Uh, as we went through Metastock 12 and Metastock 13, a lot of people really liked the Power Console and really liked what we did, but wanted just a little bit easier of a workflow, a little more customizable, a little faster to work with. And that's what we've done with the Power Console. So this is a, just a quick screenshot of the Power Console, but let's go into Metastock and look at the Power Console and what we've done. So let me just bring Metastock on the screen here. Okay, so obviously, oh, Power Console's on my other screen there. Okay, so here's the new Power Console. So at first glance, it does uh, have the same look as the old Power Console, but a few things you'll notice right away. One is the ability to resize the Power Console. That's, that's always been a big one that we've had requests for. Make it easier to work with your lists, your explorations, things like that. So definitely we are, uh, we are customizable there. We can do that. The next thing we've done is we've set it up as a tree view here within, medicine, within the Power Console. So now everything that you're working with is expandable or collapsible with a tree view. So it makes it a little easier to go through and select what it is that you're looking for. So let's say I just wanted to open this group of stocks. I can now just come over here without going to a second screen, just hit open chart and, I'm, and I've got my charts open. As I go through, you'll see up at the top here, I have six of 357,000 different securities selected. So I can always just come up here and clear out what I don't want to see. Now, one of the things is obviously Metastock is a very global product and everybody knows that. When you come in and you see all these lists, it can be a bit daunting. There's a lot in there. You can deal with a lot. So what we can do now is we can actually come in here, just right click, go to manage public lists, and what this is going to do is let you customize the Power Console so you can see just the securities that you want to see and the list that you want to see. So let's just do that really quickly. And the reason why this is important even more, as we get into the search functions, you'll be seeing more about what you want to see. So let's just come in here and let's just select the list that we want to see. Let's say I just want Equities North America. I just select those by holding down my mouse button, choosing Add. Then what we can do is we can scroll down and let's say I want the top world indices. I just grab those, click add. I want a few of these index constituents. So I'm just going to choose add there. And let's just choose the S&Ps. We want 
the NASDAQ 100, and I'm just doing this by holding down my control button, and the Dow Jones Industrials. Add those, and then finally, we'll put in 4X as well. Okay, so I've set up my list the way that I want to see it. I choose Save. And then what will happen as I go through, this will go through and update my Power Console, so then I'm only seeing the ones that I want to see. So if you, if you look in here now, instead I only have Equities North America, the Indices list, the Index Constituent list that I've selected. So now suddenly it's a lot easier for me to navigate around Metastock. So let's take a look at a few of the other features within Metastock in the Power Console. Oops. Close the Power Console there. Let's bring it, Metastock back up. So one of the things that you'll notice is in, on this screen, first of all, when I'm opening up a chart, let's say I just type in the Dow, I don't have to go to another screen now to select my load options, all that. It's just right there for me. So I have my load records, load max, set my specific times. Now I can choose my time frame right from here, choose my, uh, if I want a template or if I want an expert. One of the big things that we've had people ask for is the ability to be open, able to open up a multi time frame template right on the Power Console. So that's what this option right here is, the Use Templates Periodicity. And here's an example of a multi time frame template. So if I were to choose that and choose Open Chart, you can see it opens up the DAO for me in a five minute, an hourly, and a daily, which is the parameters of my template. So now that's it's a great thing. You can do some multi time frame templates right from the Power Console. Let's go ahead and close that. Go back to the Power Console. Now, as far as the explorations and system tests, we've also made that easier. So if you come over here, and let's just maximize this so you can see it a little better. What we've done is we've put the explorations and your skin and your lists right in the same box. So that way you're not trying to bounce between windows and try to find out where you are. So if I can move these windows down, these splitter windows, so I can see a little bit more clearly. Any of the scans, if you hover over them, will show you what the scan is and give you a tool tip about what it is you're going to be looking at. So if I hover over MACD, display securities that just generated a MACD buy signal, or the momentum filter. It'll show me everything about the momentum filter. So it's set up to make it a little bit easier for you. So let's just say I was choosing the 90-day high volume price. I could then move this window up, and I could choose my list. And it works the same way as it would with opening up charts. So if I have multiple lists selected, I can see up here how many I have selected. I can clear them out just by clear, clicking that top box. And what's nice is, is if you have scans that you run every day, you just have the same scan that you like to run every day, it will retain these settings for you. So the next time you come back into Metastock, you just click Explore, Start Exploration, and all your settings are retained and, and get in and do that. Okay, so I can set that. Over here now, there's also a new Summary button. The Summary button allows you to quickly see everything that you've selected. So here you can see I actually have two different systems selected, So as I do up here. And then I have all these securities selected. So I can see all the securities I have selected before I start my scan. I'm running Metastock RT or Metastock Pro, as it has been known. And in there, I can change the field I want to scan on. So if I wanted to scan on volume weighted average price or block volume or things like that, we can talk about that as well. Uh, Rich, I, I see your questions, and I will come back to those a little bit later. So let's, uh, so let's go ahead and cancel this. Then once we've run an exploration, the results run and are displayed the same as they've always been to make it easier for you to find that information. The system testers set up the same way. So you can come down to the system tester tab, and then you can select your system test. Again, you can hover over any of them for a tooltip to see what it is that you'll be scanning on. And then again here, you're able to see a summary of the, of the number of instruments you've selected. So that way you're able to quickly do that. Again, all in one screen, so you're not bouncing between screens. You can also then search long, short term or both. You can set your trade options right from here, so it's a much easier interface to get through. And also, again, set up your summary so you can see exactly what you'll be testing on. So you can see the workflows are actually a lot better in what you're running through and what you're going. Now, one of the big things that I was talking to you about just a moment ago was 
here's all, again, here's all the everything that we've talked about. And one thing that's nice is that once you've run a scan or you've run a test, it'll default back to that tab. It doesn't go up to charts, which has been confusing for some people in the past. And we've made that easier so you're not seeing that confused workflow. Now, one of the things that people have told us about some of the previous versions of Metastock is it was hard to find a symbol. And so what we've done is we've worked in the, in the search to make it a lot easier to be able to identify symbols for yourself and what you're looking for and being able to, again, get to the information faster that you're looking for. So if we go back into Metastock, and now this is why I was telling you about doing the right click, managing your public list. The reason for that is now if you come into the instrument search, what it will do is it will actually just search the list of the list that you have defined. So it tells us that this is what I'm tracking, so this is what I want to search. So for example, if I was searching for Microsoft, if I just type that in, it'll bring Microsoft right up. So before, with version 12, 13, and previous, what you'd, have, what you'd see is a global list of every Microsoft traded globally, and you weren't sure really which one to choose. So now it's made it a lot easier to be able to find that information, boom, right there just by typing that in. Same works by typing in a name. If you want to search by name, you can search by name. If you did want to search all public symbols, all basically every symbol out there, just search the choose the search all public symbols, and it'll search for all the Microsofts everywhere. Now, what's nice here, too, is you can say, well, I want it to contain certain letters within a symbol or within a name, or I want it to start with or end with. So, for example, if I knew SFT, for Microsoft, it would give me a list of everything that has, oh, I put STT, let's try SFT. So this would give me a list of everything that had SFT in it. And so I can look through that, oh, and there's Microsoft. So if I choose that symbol then, select OK, it'll populate it over into the window for me so I don't have to, again, go looking for it. Okay, so that, the search is, is a lot easier for you as a user. And the other place that it's great, let's actually, do this. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to go to the Dow 30 stocks, and I'm just going to select this stock out of the Dow 30. And I'll hit open chart. Let's just open it with a smart chart here. Okay, so I opened up American Express. So now I know I'm working from the Dow 30 list. What I can do is come down here, and what it will show me here in the search is just the stocks that are in the Dow 30. So if I knew I wanted Disney, I could just type in DIS and it would bring it up, or I could just scroll down, find Disney, select it, and then I'll go to Disney. So that way I'm not trying to wade through 10,000 different instruments when I open this box. I'm only searching the list that I'm working with. So that's a big thing in being able to do that. Okay, so somebody wanted me to ser search for a year, uh, one of the uh, currency pairs. So if I just come in here and I type in EUR, okay, and then if I put an equal sign, It'll narrow down and give me everything that has EUR in it because I have contained set. If I change it to start with, it'll just give me the one that has EUR equals. Okay, so again, contains will give me everything that has EUR equals in it. But if I do starts with, it'll do it that way. Now, if I were to search by name, let's just back this off, go to name. And again, as I type, it'll narrow down and give me everything that meets my list, okay? So it makes it easier for you to be able to find those symbols quickly again, okay? So, yeah, you can do the same thing with sectors. So if you knew a sector name, you could start it off by typing DJ or something like that. So, again, it will do the same type of searching with commodities, corn, you know. So if you know part of a symbol or a set of a symbol, what you'd want to do is put those symbol lists into your public list, like I showed you here, and then it would search for all of those as part of that. So if you were to put in CL or oil, it would look for everything that had oil in it as part of a commodity. So it's actually a lot better in being able to identify those those futures uh, symbols that you're looking for. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on here. And let's bring, up, bring the PowerPoint back up. Okay, so... Uh, Robert was asking, can you place two or more symbols on the chain, same chart? Absolutely, you can do that, uh, Robert. 
If I could come back to that as part of the Q&A at the end, that would be great, and I'd be happy to show you how you can place two or more symbols on the same chart. Okay, so uh, this is, again, the advanced search that we just went through. Uh, much better. Uh, for those of you who are doing uh, real-time trading, this has been one of the big things that uh, people have been asking us for for a long time is tick bars and the ability to create your own custom tick bars. Now, what a tick bar is, if you're not familiar with it, it's basically looking at the market. Let's uh, bring Metastock back up here. And let's, uh, we've got, got Walt Disney here. So what, what you can typically do in Metastock historically is if I click on tick, what this will do is it'll show you every transaction that happened on Disney throughout the day. And it's very, it can be very difficult to read because you're just seeing a lot of basically the bid and the ask throughout the day, which makes it difficult to see. So what people have been asking for is the ability to create their own custom tick bars. So what you do there is just click on, click on the I or the D, depending on what time frame you're looking at. Come into custom, change it to tick, and you can set it from anywhere from 1 to 10,000. So if I wanted a 25 period, I could, excuse me, I could just choose that, choose OK, and it will build me a, com a combination of 25 different, of the last 25 ticks into one bar. So you're looking at a much more transactional level rather than a time level, which can help in your analysis. Now on top of that, what we've also done is a popular way to analyze tick bars is to do that based off of Fibonacci numbers. So we've already we've set up predetermined Fibonacci numbers from you, 89, 144, 233, down to 1597. So you can just select any of those, apply it, and it'll build that custom tick bar for you based off of that. So pretty easy concept, um, but that, that is something we've had users asking us for for a long time. So it's finally in uh, version 14. So uh, real-time users rejoice uh, that you can finally do that. And again, there's just an image of what we've just done there. And this is another one that, uh, that people have been asking us for, uh, is the ability to, when you're working with a list or a custom list, is to quickly just add something to a list as you're looking at it. So let's, uh, let's just demonstrate that to you really quick. I'm just going to change this back to a daily for the time being. So if I'm looking at this chart and I want to add it to a custom list, maybe a watch list or a trade management list or whatever list that you're working with. Well, instead of going up here to tools, custom list manager, opening that up and then updating your list, you can just right click now, go to add to custom list. And then we can either add it to a list that I already have. I could just say, okay, add it to that list. And now it's added to that custom list. Or I could right click, go to add to custom list, create a new one right here. So we can just call this my webinar list choose create and OK and now it's in that custom list. Yeah, you can make custom color candles stick. Ab absolutely, Jim. Uh, Rich, I'm not sure I understand your question. Uh, can you remove? Can you remove also? Yes, you can remove also from a custom list, but to remove it from a custom list, you'd have to go up to the list manager and actually go into the list and then find it. And let's say I wanted to take Disney out remove the instrument, and it's gone. So that's that's the way that you can do that. So then once you have a custom list open and you're working with the custom list, again, it's a, it's a lot easier. Let's go up here to my custom lists, custom online data lists, and then here's my, my list right here. I can either open up all of them or just the first one in the list, open the chart, and then I can either click right here to choose them, which one I want to select, or I can use the right and left arrows and go through that list. So working with lists now, a lot more intuitive, being able to really dive into your list, because that's a big part of your trading, is your list management, following what securities you want to follow in the list that you want them in. So that's a great feature to be, uh, to be coming back, is the right click, add to custom list. Okay, let's, uh, let's go ahead and continue on there. Okay, so this is the one I am, I'm super excited about, uh, is in the Metastock Forecaster and what we've done in the Forecaster. So there's a few th different things that you, we've done here. Uh, and these are based off of user feedback. You know, people using the Forecaster and saying, 
here's what I do in the forecaster, here's what I want to be able to do. And so we really listened to that and really developed the forecaster around what uh, what you see right here. So one, uh, we've been, well, let's start from four and work our way back. Uh, we've started, we've included in some new rec event recognizers. You can now rank on different recognized events, and I'll show you that. You can copy patterns directly from the chart, which is an awesome tool, and I'll show you different ways that you can use that. And then you can also draw your own patterns. You can hand draw patterns and have them recognized on charts and within the forecaster. So it's a very powerful set of tools. So let's go ahead and just uh, look at uh, what we, we've included here. First of all, uh, for the, for the built-in recognizers, we have the triple witching event. Now the triple triple witching event is pretty cool because it's the it's a day that you have futures and options contracts expiring on the same day. What happens when that happens? So really, when you're looking at optionable stocks and those types of things, it's a pretty cool pattern to look at. Uh, some moving average cross ups and down. The Santa Claus rally effect, uh, which is a big thing that people uh, like to see what happens to price after uh, the Santa Claus rally. And then a January barometer negative and positive. So those are the new built-in recognizers that we put in. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on those. Uh, just uh, wanted to give you an overview of what that is. But here's an example of the, the triple witching event forecast cloud after the fact. So this one's really cool. And this is something that people really asked for, was the ability to rank in the forecaster. Because what happens in the forecaster, if you've used it or if you haven't, is you get into the forecaster, and in version 13, you would you'd see a list of 67 different patterns. but to rank them based off of different criteria, there was no way to do it. You'd have to go through and look at each individual event, which was a very time consuming process. So with this now, you're able to rank on these uh, eight or nine different criteria here. So highest profit potential, highest profit potential long, short, most accurate forecast cloud, most pronounced current breakout, distinct, uh, most recent event, most events, and sorting by name. So let me show you that in the forecaster. So again, in the forecaster, if I have a chart open, I can just right click on it and go to forecaster and it will launch the forecaster up for me. So it's actually opening on my other screen. Let me bring it over. So now down here at the bottom, so the, the general feel of it, everything's the same there, but now down here, what you can do is you can set any of the different recognized events and rank them based off of what you what you wanted to, to rank on. So if we wanted highest what event had the highest profit potential, what event had the highest profit potential long, short, forecast, breakout. So let's look at these. So if I click on highest profit potential, I just come up here and say now rescan the selected analysis. It will go through and look for the highest profit potential event on the chart for me. So here it happens to be Oh, let's actually change that again. My, excuse me. Let's go in here and let's set it as the default. And we're just going to save everything here in this way. And then we'll rescan it. Okay, and then we're just going to close the forecaster, reopen it, go to forecaster again. Uh, Scott's asking, can you customize this to pick the best long in the S&P 500? So I think you're asking out of those stocks, which one would be the best long opportunity? Is that what you're asking, Scott? Okay, so now we can see this highest profit potential is now on the top. So we have this five days or, or more up pattern. So basically what we can then do is come in and look at the forecast cloud and see how it's giving us that profit potential. So it makes it easier for you to be able to just quickly find the ones that you want. So if you have a list of securities, you can open up 10 different securities and see which one and just quickly look through at the potential clouds and see which one looks the best for you to be actually able to set your trades. The ones that I really like are the most recent event because then I can see what's happening right now. So if I click most recent event, set that. Right, and then I just close it and restart it. It'll then rank on the most recent. So we're seeing what's happening right now. So in a way, it's kind of like the scans that are built into Metastock, where you can go in. So you can see here now, here's my most recent event. So any chart that I'd open now would be ranked based off of most recent event. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. So I'm going to just set recognizer name again 
here for now so I can show you a few things here in a few minutes. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this. So, Scott, the way that you would do that is you would actually go through and you would scan the market, have it pick out signals for you because you're, what you're looking for are current signals. So in the in the Explorer, there are different events that match what's in the fore, in the forecaster. So you could scan for any of the events based off of, say, a 200-day moving average crossover or a breakout or different things. And then you get that signal. And then what you would do is you'd move that over into the forecaster and then forecast and look for that long. So when you get Metastock 14, you get a set of videos called the Unleash the Power of Metastock videos. And that actually shows you that workflow and actually how to do that workflow. So it's, it's actually a pretty good set to, to use and use that training along with it. Okay, so let's go back to the PowerPoint here. Okay, so that's the, the ranking in the forecaster. And again, that's uh, just what I showed you there. Now let's talk about drawing your own patterns and selecting patterns off of a chart because this is really the the crux of the upgrade in the in the forecaster and being able to develop and do more with the forecaster. And I've I've been able to play with this for a bit and really put it together and I'm really loving what I'm seeing and what I'm able to do out of it. And I'll show you a few examples of some of the things that you are able to do with it. So let's let's go back here and let's Let's start by looking at the Dow. So let's just open up a chart of the Dow to start us off here. So if I'm looking at the Dow and I see something happen, so I'm looking for, let's say, I see prices drop rapidly or I see you know, a big drop like this, reversals happening on this stock and I see that kind of type of reversal visually quite often and that's the kind of questions we start to ask ourselves as traders will you are you able to you know if I see a pattern there what do I do with that pattern how do I take it and move it forward so let's actually take the Dow here as a start and move it over into the forecaster so I'm just going to right click and send this to the forecaster And what we'll see here is obviously it's going to bring up our recognized events here. But what we can do now, there's a few different options. And I'm going to show you both options and how you can work with these different workflows. So let's first of all come over here and go to the event recognizer library. So this is a list of everything that's built in. Now you'll see a few of these different charts in, in here or different patterns that aren't in your Metastock. They're in mine because these are custom patterns that I've done. So you can see I have this five bar drop pattern, this eight bar reversal, uh, a current Dow pattern, and I'll talk more about that in a few moments, a double top pattern, uh, Goldman Sachs pattern, and some different V shape and W patterns that I've done. So let's, let's show you how this works and what you can do with it. So if I draw a new pattern, I choose the draw new pattern, and then I can come in here and I can set up anything that I want to. So let's, we'll call this my pattern example, just to give it a name. So if I wanted to give it some description, so if you're saying, you know, if there's a double top, you could write double top where it hits the level twice and then retraces back. So you can go through and put your notes on what the description is. Now you'll see in here I have this crosshair that shows up when I'm in this box. This is what's allow, going to allow me to actually draw my own pattern. So if I just start anywhere in here and draw a pattern, I'll just draw this type of thing here for just a moment, just to show you a basic example. So this is a inverted V pattern. So I've just developed this, so I could call it inverted V or I could call it whatever I want. Over here, what this does is it says, okay, when I'm pattern matching, what am I doing? Am I looking for shape or am I looking for shape and location in the chart? Because if I had done, let's say, this just up here in the corner, it would look for that pattern within a location at the upper end of a chart. If I do just shape only, it's only going to look for that shape. It doesn't matter where on a chart it is. So there's a, there's a big distinction there in what I'm able to do. So either shape or shape and location. So again, so now if I draw my inverted V here again, 
It allows me then to do a few other things. One, I could say, well, how many price bars do I want for that to take effect? So if I wanted eight bars, I could say eight, or I could say three or 22, whatever range you, you want there. So let's say it's an eight bar pattern or a 10 bar. Let's do, let's do a 10 bar pattern. So then we can say how closely we want it to, to match. There's a low, medium, and high sensitivity. And then once it forecasts out, how far out do we want that forecast cloud to go? 30, 90, or 100 days. So you can set that however you want. Over here, I can, if I, if I wanted to make changes to the pattern, so let's say I wanted it to kind of pop out a little bit before retracing, I could do that. I can undo those pattern changes there, or I can, so I can go in here and really just customize this however I want it to look and make it kind of a pattern that I want to see on the chart. So let's restore the original pattern here. I can invert the pattern, so if I want it to be a, an inverted pattern of that one, I can do that. I can reverse the pattern. Now obviously on a V-shape that's not going to do much, but we can reverse and invert it. Then down here, this, this pattern quick test. What this does is it takes any of the symbols that I have open in the forecaster and I can just quickly just kind of walk through and see if I can see how well it tends to match different patterns. So here it's matching about 67%, but that's only on that 10 bar range. So it really depends on how much data that you're loading and what you're going through. So you can kind of just do quick tests to see if it's looking like it's going to work. Okay, so what we can do here, let's, let's go ahead and try this one as an example. Let's go ahead and save. Now, once you've done, done that, you just need to do rescan selected analysis. Okay, and here's why I wanted it by recognizing your name earlier, so I can come back and find the, my pattern example that we did there. Okay, so now I'm looking at the my pattern example. So this is what we selected and what I drew there in the background. So what it's going to do now is it's going to show me all the times that that pattern has happened on the chart. Now what's cool is, let's just zoom in so you can see this a little more clearly. If I come in here and I hover over any of the event markers, you'll see what it'll do is it'll give me this new window. So you haven't seen this before. So what this is, is it shows me the date that the event happened it shows me the pattern match confidence, so this is an 80% match. And then the blue line is the pattern that I drew, and the red line is the chart pattern deviation, so which is actually the chart pattern you're seeing actually on your screen. And then you see in yellow up in the corner there, it's actually highlighted the pattern on the chart, so you can actually see that pattern actually being done on the chart as you go. So it's actually a, a great way to work. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and select this and see how it looks on our chart. Well, now, so what we're seeing right now is with this pattern, after it happened, it stayed in that high probability range, and now it's really broken out. Now, if you see this kind of thing happen, it's not that the forecaster doesn't work, but it's broken out of its probability range. If something's breaking out of its probability range, meaning it's, meaning it's probably breaking out big time, so it's something to really watch and understand the movement of price. So if it's breaking out of probability, it's probably a higher probability trade. So there's a few ways that we can use that type of scenario and that type of idea when we're using pattern analysis. And let's talk about a few of those different things. So let's, uh, we're looking at the Dow here, and I'm going to show you an example of something before I actually show you how to do it. Last week I was looking at the Dow, and I saw right here we had these five bars down. Okay, so I might not be able to draw that. I don't know how to draw that. You know, it's like, okay, how does that look in, in the box when I draw it? But what you can do here is you could say, I can actually take and copy that pattern right out of a chart. Let's actually go ahead and show you how to do it. So what you do is you come up here and you say, user defined pattern select. So if I select that, it gives me this little cursor box that you can see on your screen. And what it allows me to do is just circle any area on the chart. And you can see that kind of grayed out right there. So what I'm seeing here is this five bar pattern drop. And I'm just going to select that. And it asks me, do you want to capture this as a user defined pattern? So I just say yes. And you can see it's captured that essence of what's happened. So it went down three days, up, down, and then down. So that was exactly what I selected. So let's go ahead and name that. 
And you can see I actually have it select already created over here. So I'm just showing you how I, how I did this. And I'll just call this one number two. So it took five bars because that was how many I, I selected. So it automatically knows that. I can do that pattern quick test here again and go back and it'll it'll match right there 100 percent for me because that's exactly what i drew up, took off the chart so let's give it a description so drops price with one rise okay so then what we can do again we could invert this we could reverse it let's get it but this is what we want okay we want it just like we selected off the chart so let's go ahead and choose save and then it puts it in my available event recognizers. Okay, so let's go ahead and scan because we need it to rescan to be able to identify it. So here's my two patterns right here. So I've got my five bar drop or I've got my pattern, whichever one, both the same thing. And let's go ahead and zoom in on this. Okay, so you can see it's happened a few times. So it hasn't happened very many times where it's had that same exact type of pattern where it's dropped, pulled up, and then dropped again. It's happened five, four or five times here. So here's my last one. So let's look at our forecast cloud. And the forecast cloud really tends to pull up after that event happens and give us a good trading range upwards of about 2% before it pulls back, starts to either deviate up or down. So let's look at that pattern here on the chart itself. So again, here's my pattern right there that I selected off the chart. And then what does it do? Well, the next day it breaks up and it goes right out of the forecast cloud. So my high probability is here, but it's already broken out of the trading range. And it tells me that that's probably a higher pattern of, of moving up. So you'll see one of two things sometimes when it moves out of, out of the high probability pattern like that. One is it'll either break up and continue up or it'll pull down back into the high probability ranges. So if you're trading it as a breakout out of the event, then what you do is you trade it with a pretty tight stop in case it does that reversal back in. If it starts the reversal, then you know it's probably heading back down into this high probability range. Okay, so that's one of the ways that we can use patterns. So let's look at a few different examples and show you some of the other things that we can do with this. Okay, so let's uh, let's open up maybe uh, a different uh, different stock. So we're just going to go over here and go to open new analysis. Okay, and that brings me right to the forecaster tab. Let's bring up something like Goldman Sachs. And let's start the forecaster. We can see it's opening up a new tab here. So we want to see the new tab. Okay, so again, now what it's going to do is it is going to recognize that five bar drop pattern that I took off of the Dow because it copied that pattern. It's now built into the forecaster so I can use it on any other security. And we can see that five bar drop pattern actually happens a lot more on Goldman Sachs than it did on the Dow. So it's actually a, gives us some more probabilities with it. So we could look at it and see how it performs with the Dow. So you can actually see it happened right there the same time that the Dow was dropping. Surprise, correlation with the, with the Dow. But So what we could do is then do that same type of forecast. Now the forecast cloud is going to look different on this stock than it did on the Dow. And why is that? Well, because Goldman Sachs trades differently than it does on the Dow. So a pattern on one chart will do one thing where it does another thing on another chart. So you want to be really analyzing the individual securities as you go through. So let's, uh, let's just zoom back in time here. And we could go back through and we could look at any of the past examples to see how that they've worked. And some patterns may work on one chart where it doesn't work on another. And that's a critical part of doing our analysis and trying to understand what's happening. Okay, so if we look at this one, I mean, it's, it's actually a pretty interesting cloud because what did it do? It went and it stayed right at the top of the high probability. So right up at that pink level is the, is the highest probabilities that we want to kind of stick with as far as the ranges. And you'll see it, it kind of stayed right there and then dropped to the bottom edge of it and then has broken out of it. So now that it's kind of out of it, it we can see it starting to pull back up into that range. So we can use this to help us guide us in our targets. So if I was trading this, I could use this as saying, well, the upper edge of the cloud is at this price. The lower edge of the cloud is at this price. So I have now a target. I have a stop 
and I have time. So I've got my upper edge. So you know, I could know that it goes out about to mid-February. So that's we're kind of getting to the end of this cloud right here in the high probability ranges. But once it gets to this bottom edge, it's either going to bounce or it's going to break through. So you'd really want to set this as a tight stop and follow that as it goes through. Okay, so let's let's look at some ex other examples of patterns. Okay, so this one right here is one that I that I've done a few times. It's called the eight bar reversal pattern. And if I go over to the event recognizer library and I look for my eight bar reversal pattern, I can see it, all my different patterns here. And let's just scroll this over here. It'll show me here what, what the pattern is that I drew. And then it'll show me here what it looks like again give, and give me pro, my parameters. So this is shape only. It's a low sensitivity and approximate price bars are about eight. So it's looking for this eight bar reversal. Okay, so if I look at this, you can see that, you know, for the most part, they're pretty high confidence levels, 70, 80 percent, some 69s. If I wanted to change the event, I could come over here and modify the selected pattern and say, oh, you know, I kind of want this as a medium sensitivity, so it's not so, uh, doesn't give me the, the lower end ones. And then I just rescan all analysis here. And then let's go back to my 8 bar reversal. And you can see I have fewer events now because they're, it's only looking for those higher probability ones. Now in Goldman Sachs, I just had this event. So it, it just completed this event. So let's come over here and zoom in a little bit. And you can see that pattern just happened. So I just had that eight bar reversal pattern where it dropped and pulled back up in that V shape. So I can just go ahead and click on that pattern now and see here. So what happens to price after that pattern happens? Well, it tends to do this V and then continue upwards for about, looks like about the next month, it'll take and move up into about this 190 trading range at the higher level. Okay, so if I go back to the forecast cloud over here, we can see that, that it's going to be about a 5% move as a high probability trade out about 30 days. And then it starts to lose its, its coloring. So we, we really want to stay in those pinks and bright pinks as our trading ranges. Okay, so this is a really strong to find pattern. So if I was trading this pattern, and I pulled it up, I'd have a high, a pretty high confidence level on it because it's worked well in the past because I have a lot of high probability. If you see them where they're just kind of scattered and just kind of up and down, it's not, again, not that the forecaster's not working, but price doesn't really have a clear defined method after that event happens. Okay, so that's, a, that's pattern matching. Let's just show you one more time how you can come in and select patterns and then how you can draw your own patterns. So if I was looking for, let's say, just that same pattern that's happening right now, and, and what I found, just one other quick note on this, is it's a very powerful thing to look at. Let's say you were on a chart and you had a MACD buy signal or a stochastic buy signal. And we're let's say we're looking at Goldman Sachs and it had a stochastic buy today. To then come in and look at what current pattern is happening on that chart, to then say, okay, well, I've got a stochastic. What's the current pattern of the chart doing? And then analysis, do some analysis on that and forecast based off of the pattern along with the, the buy signal. Man, you've got a much more powerful signal there that you didn't have before. So it's a very powerful combination to use your, your technical indicators with patterns together and really get a stronger signal. Okay, so let's just do a, one or two more quick examples. We've got some more to go through before we wrap up. So again, if I wanted to select off the chart, I just select user defined pattern and then just copy whatever it is that I want to do. And then there's my pattern right there. I give it a name, save, and then just rescan. And then it'll look for that pattern on a chart. So let's do maybe something that's not happening right now so we can try something else. Let's just try, uh, let's just open up any chart here. We'll just open Altera here. Start the forecaster. Okay, so what it's going to do is load up Altera here, and then what we'll do is we'll just copy the current pattern on that chart and see what's happening. So let's just zoom in. Okay, so we kind of have a, a drop then a pullback. We'll just select it and see if it see what it's doing here. We'll just go ahead and select it, grab it, say yes. 
Okay, so this is kind of what the pattern looks like on the chart. Again, if I wanted to modify that and say, oh, let's make it more like that, we could do that and really modify your pattern. So let's just call this Altera so I know what it is. I'm going to save this. And then let's rescan and I see if it identifies that pattern there or if it's happened multiple times. We did copy it from the chart so we know it's going to be happening, but how many times has it happened in the past? So we can see we have these we have these events where it has happened in the past. It then does its analysis and will give us our current forecast cloud based off of that current pattern. Okay, so here's a great example. So if I've got a current buy signal, whatever it may be, MACD, stochastic, whatever indicators you're using, and then I plot the current pattern off of it, combining those two things together. So if I've got a buy signal and the current pattern tells me that it's probably going to rise, that's a stronger buy opportunity for me because I'm combining multiple things together and giving myself higher probability. So that's a great example of that. And then again, if I wanted to draw my own recognizer, just come over here, draw a new event, and then just draw whatever I want. So if I wanted this type of pattern, I could do that. If I wanted something maybe like a cup, and handle pattern. I can draw that out and say how many uh, how many uh, days that ta that takes to identify that pattern. So the, you can see that the forecaster and the drawing tools are a very powerful aspect of the forecaster. So I really encourage you to, to take advantage of this and try this out because it's a great tool to combine things together for your trades. So let's take a look at the last new feature in Metastock 14 and then I'll come back and I'll answer questions on uh, on what you have there. So let's uh, let's go back to where we were in the PowerPoint here. Okay, so there's just some examples of uh, what we we're looking at. There's a great example of uh, of that uh, V pattern shape that I was talking about, and a high probability trade. If you look at those bright oranges. Okay, so now the what I want to talk to you about is a new trading system that we've put in uh, into Metastock 14 called the LCI trading system. I'm actually going to switch PowerPoints really quick so I can give you an overview from here uh, as this one's specifically on the LCI. So what the LCI is, is it's a system uh, that's designed to be around support and resistance in Fibonacci. Okay, a lot of people trade off of support and resistance and using support and resistance in their trading. And a lot of times it's a very subjective thing in identifying support and resistance and where support and resistance is. With the LCI, what it does is it'll identify support and resistance levels for you, as well as Fibonacci retracement. It takes into account volume, exhaustion, and expansion, volatility, overbought and oversold conditions, and it gives you trailing stops and profit targets. So it'll help you understand where you should be heading in a trade based off of a scoring mechanism that it has that's very powerful based off of those support and resistance levels. So what it does, as you can see here as the, on this example, and we'll get into Metastock in just a moment and what you see in Metastock, but what it'll do is it'll identify support and resi resistance automatically for you and plot them on the chart automatically for you. So it uses a proprietary calculation to look at these on any time frame. So whatever time frame chart you're looking at, daily, weekly, five minute, one minute, tick bar, whatever it is, it will help you identify that support and resistance. It'll also do Fibonacci retracement levels. So you can see that here on, as an example, you plot the indicators on and it will draw the Fibonacci retracement levels for you automatically. Okay. It also takes into account volume. So volume is a big part of looking at a trade and understanding what's going on with the trade. So you can see here we have different trading levels in volume, we can see expansion, we can see exhaustion. So what it's looking for is the ability of volume to be either, either heading up or heading down and accompanying that with price and it'll give you a, a, an idea of the direction of price and where it's going. Okay. Then it's got a modified William percent R that's designed to help you look for those overbought and oversold conditions much faster. Okay, next is the stop loss that I was telling you about. So you can see here these dotted lines are the stop loss uh, that will come in. And this is actually set in the expert advisor to tell you a specific price where you should be looking to set your stop based off of support and resistance, Fibonacci's, and that volume movement. 
Okay? It also gives you a scoring indicator. So this is all done in the expert commentary. So the expert commentary, if you haven't used an expert commentary window before, is a very powerful way to look at information and what's happening on a chart. And I'm going to show you that here in just a moment. But the scoring indicators give you strength of the direction of the movement based off of, again, those same things. But here what we're going to see is candle patterns, volume, volatility, Fibonacci levels, cycles, etc. So it's going to pull all that together to give you a score based off of that. So Scott, when you're asking about a pattern score system for long trades, this might be something if you're looking for a scoring system to really help you identify ones that have a strong score because it has an exploration that goes with it that lets you just go through the market and identify a high ranking score, which, which would be a, a good pattern. Okay, so again, support and resistance, we already talked about that. And then the expert advisor, what it will do is show you on here pivot bounces, breakout bounces, and uh, so pivots and breakouts is what it's going to show you. So you can see a primary pivot bounce, a major pivot bounce uh, to the downside and give you all that information there. And then here's, here's an example of the expert. But let's go into the chart and look at this and see what it can actually do for you. So let's, uh, I'm going to close this chart and let's come up here. Let's, uh, let's just open up the Dow again as an example. Okay, now I can open up, I can always open up a chart, right click and apply template, but I can also apply a template from here. You've got three templates that are in here to make it easier for you to quickly bring up this information. So you've got a Fibonacci, SR main, and zones. Let's just bring up the main uh, template because this kind of has a, an accompanying encompassing view of everything. So we've got the, the, the percent R, the Williams percent R modified, excuse me on that. Okay, you can see the support and resistance levels and the Fibonacci levels here. And then we can see the volume and, see, and look for that volume expansion and contraction there. Okay, and what this will do is if I scroll in, I can, if I hover over any of these symbols, you can see here's a support major bounce. So it bounced off support here. You can see that line that it drew right there. Okay. Here it had the support major, so this is a major support line. And you can go through and it will identify these for you automatically. Now if I go into that expert and go into the commentary window, what this will do is it will give you that overview of what's going on. So if you were looking for a long trade, you'd be looking for something that had a high bullish score. If you're looking for a bearish trade, you'd be looking for something that had a high bearish score. Okay, so this will never come up to 100, but we'd want to look for something that was maybe 70, 70, 20 on the, on the bullish side versus 20, 35. So this gives us a score to be able to look at and identify if it's a strong opportunity. And when we do our scan, it'll actually give us this score right in the scan so we can identify that. So it'll give us an overview of, thing, of whatever's happening on the chart. If it's meeting a percent R criteria, it'll give you information on that. So volume is below average, highlighting that the current trend momentum is slowing. Okay, so we had a, a slower volume period here. In relation to recent vol volume, volatility is low and price volume trend is bullish. Okay, and then it'll give me my stop here, as I was telling you. So it identifies that stop level for you based off of the movement. So current stop movement would be here. And here it says that you should move it, use a standard trailing stop. So it has different levels of stops that it will give you based off of your, the criteria that you're looking for. Okay, so let's look at a, an exploration here and just show you what that looks like. So if I come into the Explorer, I'm just going to reset my scans, take everything out here, scroll down and look for the LCI. Okay, so here we can look for bearish breakouts, bullish bounce, Fibonacci retracements. So you can see it has the support and resistance scoring for the current bar as part of my description. Okay, so here we can look for the bounces on pivots, breakouts. So let's uh, let's just do the Fibonacci retracement scan. So here we have selected the Nasdaq 100 and the S&P 101. So let's go ahead and just start the exploration. Okay, so we're running through this. You can see it moving pretty quickly.
and we can see it's not rejecting anything because what this is going to do is just going to give us those levels in the score. So that's why you're not seeing any rejections there. So let's go ahead and click report and bring that over here. So if we rank here, we can see these higher scores. So here, this one, Baxter International. So going up to Scott's question of looking for something that's really going to score well on a long trade, there you go right there, because it's using support and resistance and it's looking for that type of scenario. So we have a bullish setup here. So we have a 77.5 score, bearish 30. So major percent level and minor percent level. So then we could go in, we could open up that chart, okay, and we can see everything set up there, go into the expert commentary and look at it here, okay? So when we're looking at these different setups here. Let's actually go in and just really quickly just look at our PowerPoint here one more time. Okay, so again, here's the LCI template, LCI commentary, and I'll, I'll get into this in just a moment. But what we've tried to do is we've tried to make it, again, so you have a quick, easy workflows to help you identify trades quickly. So one, uh, improved power console to help you get around get to your trades faster, uh, the ability in the forecaster to help you rank, sort, scan, draw patterns, do pattern analysis based off of your most recent trades, uh, custom list management much better, the ability now to uh, score and rank based off of support and resistance, and really identify those high probability trades based off of support and resistance. Okay, And then finally, uh, one other thing here is that we've done with Metastock 14 is we put together a new Unleash the Power of Metastock. So the Unleash the Power of Metastock has always been something that, uh, that I've worked on. Um, so that's me right there. Hello, everybody. Uh, what I try to do with the Unleash the Power of Metastock is show you different ways that you can identify trading opportunities. Okay, so, and how to navigate Metastock a little bit better. So what I've, the first few, Charting and Power Tool Overview, give you an idea of how to kind of get around Metastock, set it up, get it up and going for you. Then you can get in and you can learn how to filter and backtest. We didn't talk about backtesting today, but that's a powerful function of Metastock. So there's a few chapters on backtesting, forecasting, and then filtering and forecasting, which, which, excuse me, which is one of the things that I talked about earlier in the presentation, the ability to choose a pattern or an event, scan for it, and then go in and forecast. Uh, how to do the pattern analysis that we've been uh, demonstrating here in, in this uh, webinar. Uh, the RMO trading strategy. Sector stat, which is something that was put in a, a, into Metastock 13 and doing sector analysis and analyzing sector. So if you're doing sector analysis, this is a great chapter to go through. Ecostat, which is a macroeconomic uh, overview. And then again, how to build custom lists because building lists is really a big part of your trading. So with that, what we try to do is give you the whole package in one, getting Metastock, and then getting the training along with it. So this is something we normally sell for $99. But if you do, if you purchase Metastock new, or if you're upgrading to Metastock, if you have a previous version, you're coming up to the newest version of Metastock, we'll actually give you that for free to help you get started with the new version of Metastock and really get up and going. And as always, there's you know free technical support that we offer. There's the um, training, the standard training videos that show you how to navigate uh, around Metastock that are on metastock.com. But this one, again, is really designed around helping you identify trading opportunities, which is what a lot of us want to be able to do very quickly. So it's buying trading opportunities. So there's a, there's a PDF manual that you get with this, and then uh, about two and a half hours worth of video that you get along with it now that you only get if you have this. So if you, if you haven't upgraded to, um, uh, does our add-ons remain? Yeah, if you if you have current add-ons and you're upgrading to version Metas Metastock version 14, there's a migration utility that'll actually copy them from the old version up into the newer version for you, so you don't have to worry about losing anything or anything like that. So no worries there, Benny. So what I would do is I would encourage you if you don't have Metastock or if you need to upgrade to the current most current version, we've got some great upgrade opportunities going on right now uh, with the with special pricing on both purchasing Metastock and upgrading to the latest version of Metastock, and as well getting the free un Unleash the Copy of, uh, Unleash the Power of Metastock, excuse me, 
that gives you all that training and helps you navigate Metastock in the most efficient way to find your trades. So if you haven't upgraded yet, or you're looking to try Metastock out, uh, give my uh, sales guys a call. Um, their number is 1-800-882-3040 or 801-506-0900 if you're international. The, uh, if you want to chat with, with our sales staff, that's metastock.com slash sales chat. You can go directly uh, to that to, uh, to help get to help them, have them help you get uh, set up with Metastock right away and get, uh, get in, download it. Um, but again, I mean, it's a, you get a, you get a 30 day money back guarantee with the upgrade or a, a new purchase to try it out, see if it works for you. And if it doesn't, that's okay. But I think for the most part, you're going to find that the way that Metastock flows now, it's a lot more powerful, a lot more intuitive and a lot easier than what you've experienced before. So, um, let me go ahead and just uh, turn off the recording here. And then what we'll do is I'll, I'll do some Q and A with you, answer any questions that you have. And uh, I'd like to thank you for attending the webinar and uh, spending some time with, your, with me here today to learn about Metastock 14.